Today, we're honored to welcome a distinguished panel of former International House residents who will help to illustrate the many ways that IUPUI prepares students to operate in our globalized world. Today's event is actually a couple parts celebrating our 30th anniversary, um, but this uh, part of the program is made possible by the Welcoming Campus, Initiative, uh, Welcoming Campus Innovation Fund, spearheaded by Chancellor Paydar. The Welcoming Campus Grant awarded to International House has supported enhanced programming for International House residents, funded the inaugural two years of the International House Global Scholars Program, and made it possible for us to bring iHouse alumni from three continents back to campus today. We also welcome back Don Whitehead, former Director of Curriculum Internationalization with the OIA and now Senior Director of Global Learning and Curricular Change at the AACNU. Um, she will moderate our alumni panel today. But first, it's my pleasure to introduce Nasser Paydar, the fifth chancellor of IUPUI and executive vice president for Indiana University. Well, I want to thank all of you for what you have done to get us to this point. I want to thank all of the individuals who are going to be up here and talking about their experience and their contributions here. And thank you for the opportunity to thank our wonderful fa faculty staff. Thank you, everyone. 28 years ago, both Giles Hoyt and Pat Bittender were instrumental in the beginning of IUPUI's International House. In the original proposal for iHouse in December 1990, they wrote, the world is changing at an accelerated pace. Responsible citizenship now requires an awareness of global change and the skills to develop effective responses to these changes. International House at IUPY will focus on developing the leadership which will offer creative solutions and alternatives to the challenges of the 21st century and will foster a deeper understanding and appreciation of other cultures through participatory learning activities. Well, it's now 2019, and the world has vastly changed, but iHouse's guiding principles remain the same. Since 1991, as IUPUI's first residential-based learning community, iHouse has been home to more than 1,100 American and international students living side by side from nearly 20 countries each year. Through immersive living with residents, from many other countries, the students have taken part in dialogue and they've developed friendships that have allowed them to understand cultural differences and be better prepared to solve the challenges facing their generation and the next generation. Beginning this year, residents will be able to have this global engagement recognized on their IUPUI experiential learning and applied learning record. In May of 2017, the Office of International Affairs in partnership with Housing and Residence Life received a $25,000 grant from Chancellor Paydar's Welcoming Campus Innovation Fund for the project Creating Global and Local Community Through the International House. This support has facilitated several opportunities to experience expanded programming connecting the students and residents with Indianapolis international communities and reconnect events for current and former iHouse residents who are living locally in central Indiana. The fund has also supported the inaugural two-year funding of the Global Scholar Program, which will allow funding for one U.S. and one international student resident with a $2,500 stipend each year. This award supports student leaders in staying for a second year at iHouse as resident leaders who promote participation in iHouse activities that support the broader global learning goals of iHouse and IUPUI. We are pleased to recognize the two 2018-2019 iHouse Global Scholars, Aline Drio from Mexico and Alyssa Gogol from Southern Indiana. If you're here, could you wave and let us recognize you? Okay, congratulations. Thank you. And we'd also like to recognize Jill Jean-Baptiste, the International House Program Director since 1996. Jill, please wave and be acknowledged. 
And as I, I'll ask one other indulgement, as our panelists are coming to the stage, I'd ask if we could recognize any current or former I House residents. Could you wave and let us acknowledge you in participating in this wonderful initiative? Um, so first, I just wanted to give each panelist an opportunity to introduce herself to the audience. We thought it was better to hear directly from them than for me to read um, their bios. So we'll start on, on my right with Beth. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Sabato. I lived in I House from 2001 to 2004. I graduated from IPY with a degree in geography, and I currently work as a gemologist at Moyer Fine Jewelers in Carmel, Indiana. And I am married to a gentleman from my house. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out more about yeah. that later. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Hi, uh, I'm Helen Du. Uh, I was with I House I, uh, in 1996 to 1997. I uh, majored in computer science. And after that, I've been working for an international company for the rest of my life to today. And same here, I'm also married a guy from I house, I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> so how significant and of impact for the experience living in the house to my life. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Christiana Halim. I'm from uh, Indonesia, Bandung. Um, I stay in international house from 1996 to 1999. Um, I have my best friend, uh, Aaron. Unfortunately, she's unable to make it today, but is my lifetime friendship that I built with her uh, since I met her in iHouse. So it's a really quite a journey. Uh, I'm currently working as a logistics manager. Uh, I graduated from IUPUI through interdisciplinary engineering and applied statistics. Uh, and I work for Express Scripts for the last 10 years. Hi, uh, my name is Nelly Tuikong. I am from Kenya. Um, I lived in, uh, at iHouse from 2006 to 2008. Uh, I did not marry anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, I moved back to Kenya after graduating uh, with a degree um, from IU School of Nursing. I uh, moved back to Kenya to start a uh, makeup brand, one of the leading makeup brands in Kenya currently. So I'm excited to be here. Thank you, Nelly. I think we may know the answer to this one, but one question I wanted to start with, and we'll start with Beth, is what is one of your fondest memories of living in I House? Well, of course, <laughs> meeting my husband. Okay. And meeting my best friend, um, who we actually had a, a child, children together about five weeks apart. But one of my most fondest memories about I House is the openness. Being able to walk down the hallways and talk to your friends and be able to find out what they're, what they're cooking and what's going on in the world today or what, have you caught up on this class yet? Just that overall openness to be able to talk to one another from different countries um, made every day very, very special. Yeah, same here to me. Uh, I house is the melting pot. It's cross-cultural experiences really make my life different, especially for me coming from a, a country like an Asian country where uh, we were not grow up being social and break eyes to know each other. But with the experience, especially in our house, we have the Friday afternoon coffee hours. We learn different cultures. And also the, the, the finest memory I remember vividly to today, when we, um, we enter the I house, there's a bulletin board there, and there I find all the uh, information when I first want to get a car here, so I contact my husband. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then we first become friends and with all his help, and we just uh, grow our relationship until today. That's really uh, bring a lot of impact to my life. Thank you. Um, yeah, my biggest fond memories is really build lifetime friendship. Sometimes you don't realize when you meet somebody and your journey take you the whole lifetime. So uh, the op I was really, when I come to our house, I think I'm probably close-minded a little bit. And I think taking time to understand other people and really uh, enjoy being friends with other culture and how similar and how different we are. 
I think all everybody enjoy good food, <laughs> so we always, you know, go to somebody's uh, room and hey, what are you cooking? And it's really one of the highlights as well. So, um, similar really is just the uh, diversity and the culture, and um, and eventually, you know, being open to all the different things that would come along. For example, um, one of the girls who was my roommate was actually American from Indiana, and she took us camping, which was my first camping experience, um, in the pond, and I was thinking, are there not beaches in here? <laughs> uh, and having um, two Italian uh, boys on the top floor, uh, we lived in the nice house, not, not where you guys live. <laughs> um, and this Italian um, dudes basically making pasta from scratch. Um, so things like that that were just very priceless. Yeah. Thank you. And so many of you obviously have spent time living abroad, working abroad, traveling abroad. Could you tell us how you've been able to stay in touch with some of your friends and colleagues from my house over the years? And if you've had some of these experiences in unexpected places. So Helen, would you like to start this time? Yeah, I think today with the advantage of technology, we have all the social media. It's so easy to connect with your friend from Facebook, all those platforms. But at the time when we're here, we hardly have email connections. So it's forced us to really engage, connect with people. So we really come to different country after we graduate, still meeting them. Like we have a huge friends from Malaysia group. We go visit them. Same thing, we, I invite them, come to China, just to really go into our different culture, to extend our um, that international spirit and even further. I think that's something very unique. We still uh, remain very close today. Thank you. Christiana. Yeah, I think with the help with the social media, really connecting with Facebook, you know, and like, hey, I'm going to Indonesia. Can we meet up? So really that really open up and help uh, continue to connect. And like a lifetime friendship, you just continue to grow and then a friend of a friend of a friend and your network start getting bigger. Yeah, social media, um, and uh, ironically also, some of the Kenyans who lived at I House um, uh, happened to also move back to Kenya, so that was a great way to, to reconnect. Um, and also friends, friends of mine who, when I was living in IUPUI at I, I, I House, I would invite them over, like Mallory, who's here, she was my nursing friend, she would come over to um, I House and eventually rip you know, forced her to come and visit me in Kenya because uh, she was just seeing all the cool photos. Uh, but more than anything, just um, social media and WhatsApp. WhatsApp, WhatsApp? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, you're, if you have WhatsApp, you're connected, especially internationally. So kind of cool to kind of see what other people are doing um, online. Kind of cool to see also, you know, Jill and her kids and... Uh, we used to literally like hang out with, with your kids and seeing them all grown up and I don't think without social media we would have been able to keep tabs on each other and see who's where. Uh, actually one of the people who lived at our house is um, some senior level government official in Kazakhstan or something like that. So I saw something published about him and I was like, I know him. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. It's really cool to see people around the world that you lived with. Thank you. Beth. Even when I travel abroad to see my husband's family in Malaysia, even if I didn't post on social media that I'm going to Malaysia, one time having coffee, I hear a call across the mall, Beth, look over, and it's a friend I met in I house years ago. <laughs> and it, it doesn't matter where you go, it's those unique friends and experiences that all connects together, kept together by social media, but also it's people you will never forget and they will never forget you. It's just something that's in your, in your heart now. So you've talked a bit about how it touched you personally, friendships and those types of relationships. Could you tell us a little bit more about how your experiences at iHouse also impacted your careers or some of the directions that you've gone in your careers? You shared a little bit about your careers when we started, um, but could you point to anything about living at iHouse and how that influenced what you're doing today as a profession? So we'll start with Christiana this time. Sounds good. I think uh, really the open-mindedness and seeking to understand. 
So sometimes if you don't see eye to eye, maybe somebody have different opinion. I think instead of trying to like, my way is the right way or whatever, I think really seek to understand and listen to others. It's really, to me, the key for harmony and relationship, even in a workplace. Um, so uh, to me, that's what I need from International House. Um, so um, owning a maker brand and having to do manufacturing in different parts of the world, um, I have contract manufacturers in China and Taiwan and currently looking into Korea because K-beauty is a thing right now. Um, so I think living at I house, you know, if, if, if I was just thinking about going, let's say, to China to just randomly go to China and visit a factory, that would have been something completely out of my mind. But I think having been at I house and interacting with, you know, Chinese roommates or Chinese um, flatmates or Taiwanese, it made it feel like close, you know, it didn't seem like Taiwan was this, you know, really far place that, you know, you just hear stories about, you know, you had friends who would tell you about Taiwan, or you had friends who would tell you about China, or you had friends who would tell you about Italy. So it made, it, it's sort of like I was having an international experience in one place uh, without actually having to leave. And once I was able to visit these places, it didn't feel as foreign, like for real. It did not feel like I was an outsider because I was already immersed in, you know, the cultural diversity and I was open and I was flexible to try foods. And, you know, I, I got to China and it's not the same Chinese food we all eat, right? <laughs> so, um, but being open-minded about it and trying new things, um, it wasn't, you know, pasta being rolled from scratch, but it was something else. But having been immersed and being around other people who are different, who eat different foods, made it really easy for me to spend almost 10 days in China alone in a place where, you know, there's no English, so you just kind of have to figure out how to get from one place to another. But the only way really I can say I was able to do it with ease. I remember even my husband being like, oh, where are you going? <laughs> Alone? Um, and it was, it, was, it was amazing. So, and that has really helped me a lot with anything that I do. Like, uh, I'll be in Italy in, in the next two weeks. I'll be exhibiting in Dubai in April. And so it just sort of like, it's full circle. I'm, I'm going back to where I started, which was the international scene. Yeah, to just add on that, I think to me, same thing, uh, after uh, the learning experience in iHouse, I think the, uh, the value and the spirit with open, respectful, and diversity and inclusive has been really carried through all the rest of my career. So I've been um, leading, uh, I've been working for um, Microsoft as a, a CMO for Greater China Region for seven years. Also after that with uh, Apple, managing Apple uh, retail uh, for Asia Pacific market. So with all this uh, great uh, company I've been working with, same value you will see they carry through because today the talents and all the, uh, the values you need, the international company need that, uh, build that the synergy together. And same thing I was uh, major in uh, computer science here in the school, I think that's the knowledge also carry me through to work for those uh, global companies. I think that's uh, have tr tremendous value uh, how I grow with the uh, career path, yeah. Being in the jewelry industry, um, it seems unusual, but I deal with the international community every day, from the Hasidic Jews that sell diamonds to the Indians um, that manufacture diamonds and small diamonds called Mili, to Chinese manufacturing, to the Japanese and their pearls. Every day is an international fest for me. So um, I love that I am able to openly accept their cultures. And um, let's say, if I learn some part of their language, I can always welcome and say, um, in Hindi, you say, oh my gosh, I know how to say, um, how are you? So it's like those little things you learn in I house that you can break the ice with your new clients and they respect that and they know and understand that you're not that typical, well, I mean, typical American person that's kind of closed-minded. Um, being opal, open, respectful and 
understand that the world we live in is an international community. I think you say Kemcho in Hindi? Kemcho, I thought it was Apkeseho. Apkeseho in Hindi. How are you? You've, you've all spoken about some really positive experiences, the positive impact of living in iHouse, but can you think back to any challenges that you had to overcome when you were in iHouse? And would anyone like to share a challenge? I, I, I'm seeing some nods. <laughs> and, and sort of how you were able to overcome that. And when you think about it now, was it as big of a challenge as you thought when you were an undergraduate student? Um, anyone that would like to answer? Sure. OK. No? I think mm -hmm. uh, the challenge was really not so much an I house challenge. It was an American challenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, it just you know coming, you know, the, the, the culture shock. Uh, I flew into O'Hare um, Airport where the people who were sponsoring me for my education picked me up. They had told me it was, it wasn't the summer and they told me it was hot. But my idea of hot is like hot Kenya. <laughs> um, and for those of you who've been to Eldoret, it's quite cool, right? Um, so this is how I arrived in America in the summer. Boots, you know, with an African regalia. Uh, so there was the culture shock. Um, I remember landing in O'Hare and I had never seen so many white people in my life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, there's so many. <laughs> um, but just the general culture shock, the, the vastness mm -hmm. of, of the country, because we drove from, from Chicago. And, and I think being in I House was was really perfect because we were all able to go through this culture shock together, you know, it, so that you were not, you know, somebody was not looking at you and was like, but of course that's, you know, we drive on the right side. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know. Um, but having other people to go through that with you, um, you know, the other big thing, I, I know I see cops here, but, you know, our <laughs> drinking age limit <laughs> in other countries is, is 18. So you get here and one, you can drink on campus and you can drink, period. Um, but so it's things like that that you had to learn because you don't know. Um, and it was kind of good to sort of go through with that with other people and, you know, be like, did you know this? And like, no, I didn't know this. And, like, and then, of course, we had Jill who would really, she was like a mother <laughs> more than anything. <laughs> so I think it was just generally like a lot of things, especially initially just getting thrown at you. You've come from a completely different culture, a completely different background, um, and having to uh, learn fast because literally, you know, school is starting next week. You have to know where everything is. And kind of having that camaraderie, like you guys are saying, there's this camaraderie that we had um, as I house residents. I don't know if, the, if that's what it is right now, but there was always this camaraderie with, with I house residents, whether that was getting groceries together, whether that was going camping together, whether that was making pasta together. So that was really incredible. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else want to talk about that? I think I had the opposite effect <laughs> <laughs> from being so surrounded by my normal everyday American norms and being thrown into this cultural society and walking down the hallways and smelling blachan for the first time. It's a fermented fish paste, or um, my roommate e eating raw onions with lemon juice and going, oh, oh, no, no, no. Um, and then my husband, who, of course, he grew up with maids and, and people that helped him. That's the social norm back there. But when he came here, he didn't even know how to do laundry or cook much of anything. So I always felt it was my responsibility to help the cultural students, to help learn how to live um, in American society. So it was a cold shock for me, but I always took it as this time like, okay, this is how I can help them become better global citizens. So let's go to it. Let's learn how to do laundry. <laughs> um, sure. Um, so my first roommate is actually from Malaysia. And you would think like Indonesia, Malaysia, close enough, you shouldn't be have any cultural problems. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually quite different because uh, she's very religious and our Muslim in Indonesia is also different 
uh, different restrictions than Malaysia. So I don't understand it. So I, I, I wasn't Muslim, so I did not know I cannot use microwave to heat up my pork fried rice. So of course my roommate was upset. It's like, oh my God, what are you doing? Now I have to clean it seven yeah. times. Da, 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 da. So, but I think one thing is that like seeking to understand, like I'm sorry that I do not know that uh, I cannot do that. So thank goodness in the international house, they have the uh, community microwave that I will be using moving forward. So I think it's just really resolve the conflict by mm -hmm. seeking to understand and open mind that, oh, that's how they, they proceed. And uh, we will, to the tolerance and be able to say that her, her also important so that I will go ahead and use my community microwave versus my room microwave. Something small like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think one of the unique thing I house did, uh, you ha the roommate has to be from different country, different culture. Mm -hmm. That's really help you to force you to be engaged with different culture. It's like when we grow up in, in the, the Asian culture, a lot of things are given, even in the early education. Because all the program, education, the teacher tell you what you need to do. But here you have to be independent, soft to think what you want to take a different program, different major. So that's, that's, you need to be engaged with other students to ask, how, how do you do this? How, how should I do? So that's, that's the motivation to today is living and working for the international company. You have to be with your career, same thing, you have to be, you have your own mind to, to think what you want to be, so someone else therefore could help you. I think that's, that's the, the foundation that really helped me a lot. And I think also just, to, I mean, one of the things that I thought uh, uh, you all did very well with the International House is actually have Americans in there. Okay, because we needed that. <laughs> so, are you sure? Are, are you sure? Because <laughs> my, my, my other flatmate was uh, Leslie. Uh, she was, you know, this you know, American beautiful blonde um, from, uh, from up north. So she's the one who was taking us camping and uh, took us to uh, her family. And also, she didn't have to do any of these things. Is that thing is that she didn't have to take us to her home. She took us to her home and they had deer and like all these things that for us this was like they keep antelopes, you know. <laughs> for us it's like equivalent. Um, so it was feeding culturally from from both sides really. Yeah. Some of my fondest memories is taking home international students that were friends of mine to my hometown for like holidays like yes. Easter and Thanksgiving yeah. and Christmas. My parents would always be as welcome as we were. But it's, it's so much fun to, to experience your guys' culture and um, allow and share my culture with you guys. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was great, it was great. Yeah. You, you've given some great examples of lessons and how they've impacted you positively in, in the workplace and other areas. But were there any things that you learned or discovered from living at iHouse that you didn't realize immediately, but you came to realize later in life? Any lessons that you've, you've learned? Yeah, I so think um, uh, for me, I think the biggest sort of lesson was uh, being, being open and, and being not even just being open, because also sometimes that's kind of an overused statement, is being flexible. Um, it was being flexible in general. It was being flexible that Tuesdays was grocery day, so you had to figure out if you wanted food. <laughs> um, it was flexible that um, you had to live with, let's say, um, a Muslim student who had, you know, maybe had to do prayers or could not, you know, you could not, you know, microwave pork. Come on now, you know, you didn't know that? <laughs> but, you know, things like that. And um, just being flexible in general. And I think for me, that has also kind of translated in, um, in how I run business, especially. So, for example, there's a time 
um, for the first time. And I don't know, even know why I didn't know the, about the Chinese New Year while I was here. But, um, or maybe I knew it, but because I was never going to do business with China, I was just, you know, it was like, okay, fine, it's, it's a celebration. But I remember we were geared to launch a product, um, and it's January 15th, and uh, my Chinese uh, contract manufacturers are telling me they're going to be closing for a whole month. And I'm thinking, what? We're supposed to launch this product now. And so I could have exerted myself. I could have been like, no, I need my product now. But I had to be flexible and say, okay, we're going to reprogram and then we'll probably, uh, you know, we'll have to discuss how we're going to launch, la uh, launch this product later. But I think more than anything, it just really taught me how to be flexible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, go ahead. I think one of the main things I came to learn after leaving iHouse was how much I learned to include people and not exclude people. <coughs> make your life, again, more open, but make sure that something as simple as invite them to dinner. Oh, well, let's go try this international restaurant. I've never been there. It's making sure you are open to your friends from all over the world and know that you're there. Um, trying to, some, so many times in today's lives we exclude people from our lives because they don't have the same beliefs or same religion. I like to include them in my life and make sure that they are comfortable and know that they are able to talk and discuss anything they want with me. I'm never a person who has, I may have strong beliefs and strong thoughts, but I never make them feel like their thoughts are inferior to mine. Um, their opinion is as important as mine trying to include them in anything I can. One thing that I learned is that when I would come here to the US, I, this is really my dream to be here. So I was like, I'm gonna study hard, I'm gonna get a job here, really other things is like secondary. I think the one thing that I missed out is that really taking the time to know people and build friendship. I think that's to me, I, I missed that. I could have expanded my network and have more get more uh, people to know. So I think it's really important to really, people around you that you see every day, say hello to them or really try to understand because sometimes you, you may find your only friends. So we could never have uh, enough friends. So I think that's that's lesson learned for me. Yeah, for me, one of the key takeaways is just never underestimate the influence and the impact could, you could contribute and you could also gain from others with the cross culture learning and sharing. Um, I think that's because I'm benefit from that and I married a guy from the <laughs> States and, the, and I, one of the funny story when we get married, he come from the small town, Paraguay, Indiana, only have a few hundred people population in that whole county. And then I come from a city with 20 million people. Oh. <laughs> so when we get registered here, and the, the typical question they're asking, are you related? It's like, do we look like, are we related? <laughs> but I mean, that's, <laughs> but that just to show you, like, it's not a, like impact me, but I'm also I, I, I could influence, impact other like Americans to the different culture mm -hmm. they could experience ways. Uh, I think that's the, the tremendous thing. And that's also uh, give me the energy and the motivation. So right now I'm also hosting some uh, our an IU uh, school delegation. The students come visit China. So I'm volunteer wholesome. I take them tour to Apple store, just tell them how the Chinese consumer using the digital, using WeChat payment, digital payment. So they really, um, that's like me giving back. I, I, I enjoy that because I gain a lot from this community in the States. So I'm like holding, host, hosting the, the US students come to China to in, appreciate different culture and learning. That's just something I, I feel like everyone could do that. It's, it's not a difficult thing. It's just the, the energy and the passion you have there. And I think also, I think in hindsight, we didn't really realize that we were, like I said before, we were helping each other sort of um, get acclimated. Um, and I remember thinking before, what would, I, what would my life or trajectory had been if I had chosen uh, to live in a different house? Or what would it look like for me if I'd you know, gone to, I don't know, IU Bloomington or something? Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I think, you know, it could have been, it could have turned out great, it could have turned out, you know, definitely different, but I think I would have probably felt lonely or sort of um, isolated and different, and um, being able to live in I house in hindsight, it was really helping each other uh, sort of like navigate this new terrain, new environment. So in, in high, you know, like you're saying, when you're in school, you're kind of trying to focus on what you came to do, especially as an international student. Um, and you tend to not really socialize enough. Um, and especially if you know you're going to go back home, you're thinking, well, why do I need to make friends? Um, but it is, it is important. And, and like you, I think I, I kind of missed out on some other great friendships as well. You've, you've all given indirectly uh, some bits of advice, but we, we know we have some current iHouse residents here, so we, we wanted you to have an opportunity to, to give some advice for current iHouse residents. What advice would you give to the students? We've heard some things about you know, making friends, taking time to get to know people, um, but is there any other advice that you would want to give to current IUPUI students? And they could be those in iHouse and those who aren't in, in iHouse. Once you graduate, travel, visit your friends, it's, it's amazing. This world is a big, beautiful place, so go out and get it. Yeah. I think just two things. One is the people connection with sense of uh, diversity inclusion always in mind. And second is to always reflect the values you, you are holding, no matter what nationality and what culture you're from. Um, with that uh, value in mind, it will help you to focus what you believe in and what you can really grow yourself. Just to make a simple example, uh, I have that three layer of levels always motivate me, keep me focused. I think the funda fundamental layer, same thing with our school promise, like fulfilling your promise. Same thing uh, when you are when you get to the job in the career, always get things done, be accountable and committed with what you're doing. To me, that's the fundamental value. And then uh, the, the layer two would be the growth mindset because with the dynamic environment, the economy, and the, the social situation we're at, you always have to keep uh, motiv self-motivated to learn, to build up the learning agility to grow. I think that uh, will help you accelerate both in your career or in your uh, academy uh, study world. And then the top layer to me is the leadership. Because if you want to achieve something bigger than yourself, you have to, to um, kind of build the community, help lead yourself and lead others to make impact to, to the society. That's, thank you. Well, it's kind of hard because he has really good <laughs> summary. <laughs> uh, I will take an advice from Helen. That's a, that's a really good one. <laughs> um, but I think really, you know, people is really important. You know, I think to me, uh, value people around you, especially if it's a good influence, really um, cherish that uh, and use that um, to, to better yourself. Um, I think, uh, you know, make memories. I, I think uh, a lot of the things, things we couldn't share on this panel. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, our fondest, fondest memories. <laughs> um, it's just the memories that we, the, the times that we spent with each other, um, uh, the troubles we got into um, <laughs> together. But um, just share memories, you know. Uh, I don't know if you have an American in your, in your apartment, you know, go camping, uh, make pasta or make whatever it is. Um, share share memories and it's, it's the one thing that you're going to be, you, will, you might never remember the hours you spent at the library or you will never really remember uh, other sacrifices that you, you had to, to, to make, but the things that you probably most going to remember is the memories that you shared. So create memories more than anything and, and have a global mind. Um, I would have never thought, I mean, I, would, I was a nursing maid. My, my career path was set. I would have never thought I would be, um, you know, in Guangzhou in the thick of the factory things and making makeup formulas in Taiwan and uh, thinking about Korean beauty, you know, stuff like that. Um, but 
being in an international setting, that was a really good stepping stone. That was a really good way to open up my international um, op like open-mindedness. So take advantage of that. Take advantage of the people around you because you really never know where you're going to, to, to end up. You never know. So yeah, so just enjoy your time. It's, it's going to go really fast. <laughs> and, and try to marry somebody from my house. <laughs> <laughs> it works out well. Right. It works out well. <laughs> funny, funny fact, we all have an Asian connection. So her husband is Malaysian. Malaysian. Uh, your husband is American. <laughs> uh, and my husband is also Korean. So we were <laughs> marveling at, at you know, our Asian connection here. <laughs> yeah. Fit into the populations in a very small part of the world. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to thank all of you for being here today. I think it, what you had to share was very helpful for the audience. For me, um, it, it's wonderful to hear these stories about how iHouse through the years has impacted you and is still impacting you and all the panelists will be here during the break so feel free to um, ask them questions they weren't able to discuss in front of the larger group as Nellie said the fondest memories I didn't hear about either uh, but but we just want to thank you each of you for coming and participating in this this panel so thank, thank you, you.